Good evening again. I thank each of you for coming out and being a part of the services tonight. And, and I just, um, you know, throughout the week, I've been thinking about what the services are tonight and uh, over the Lord's Supper. And, you know, I, I've just prayed about it and, and read through different scriptures this week. And where the Lord settled me at is in Isaiah. Isaiah 53, if you will, turn your Bibles to there. Isaiah 53. And I think, you know, the main thing that here tonight is what this table says that sits in front of us. And it says, in rem remembrance of me, which is what the picture of the Lord's Supper is, correct? It's in remembrance of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us as, as a Savior, what he has done for us in giving his life. And, and that's what the scripture we're going to read about tonight. We're going to look at this tonight before we partake in the Lord's Supper. And I just pray that you are here tonight, that you're here with open hearts and open minds and clear conscience to stand before the Lord, to partake in a, something that he give us as a New Testament church to partake in. Um, if you're there, if you're in the scripture, Isaiah 53, say amen. amen. If you're not, say on me. We'll wait a little longer. So if you will, join me as we read this. Isaiah 53, starting verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you again, Lord. I stand before you tonight, Lord. As, as I stand behind a pulpit, Lord, I pray that you guide and direct this message, Lord. I pray tonight, Lord, as we go forward and we are partaking, Lord, in the Lord's Supper, that we do this in remembrance of you. Lord, that we remember what you've done for us. Lord, what you gave for us. And Lord, that we remember why. Lord, I thank you so much for my salvation. I thank you for the salvation of others, Lord. And as 
uh, Bo mentioned earlier, Lord, I pray. Lord, I know that we should have a, a burden to carry the gospel to others. But Lord, I pray that you keep that burden strong. That you, Lord, guide us and direct us to your word. That you direct us in your footpaths, Lord. That we carry that gospel out to others where they can have the same gratitude that we have. Lord, your love. What you've done for us. Lord, I pray that you be with us tonight as we read your word. And that we understand what exactly was done for our lives, Lord. That we can partake in this in remembrance of you. Lord, I love you. And I thank you so much again for what you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now this was written in the Old Testament. This was before anything. This was before Jesus Christ was here on this earth. And he was given a prophecy of what was going to happen. Now you and I are gathered here tonight. And we're going to do this. We're going to partake in the Lord's Supper. Because it's done in remembrance of him. In remembrance of what was prophesied right here. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're gathered up tonight. And to have the opportunity to partake in the Lord's Supper is just awesome because of what our Christ done for us. Understand that. That when he left this earth, this is one of the things, one of the ordinances that he gave to us to partake in together as a New Testament church. And he said, you do this in remembrance of me. And folks, there's sometimes that I go throughout my week, I go throughout my day, and there's sometimes the way Ben lives in his selfish life that I forget what God's done for me. What Jesus Christ done for me. And you say, that's crazy, brother. Really, how do you live your life every day? You see, the way we live our life portrays how we love Jesus Christ. We portray our love for Jesus Christ because we remember what he's done for us. It says, Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's revealed through us. Correct? He said, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. Now I want you to think about that for just a little bit. Jesus Christ left heaven with his Father to be born on this earth. Right? He was born in a manger. A feed trough, per se. He was laid, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and cloth, or whatever you want to say, and he was laid in a feed trough because there was no room at the inn. We know the story, correct? But he came from, he left heaven for that. He left heaven to start his life on earth absolutely knowing that nobody had a place for him to start with. Think about that for a minute. We get mad when we don't have a seat at the table. He left the table to come to a place that he didn't have a seat at. He gathered up and he says, Yes, Dad, I'll do this. You know why? Because I know Ben Britton. I know the members of the ones that are going to be sitting in Bay Lake Missionary Baptist Church, the ones that are going to be partaking in the Lord's Supper, September the 19th of 2021, I know who that's going to be. And this is why I leave perfectness to go dwell with them. I'll give up everything to have nothing. That's what he done. And it said here, it says this, it says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now I think that describes us. He came here a king and had nothing. He made us kings and we don't even want to act that way. Think about that. 
The things that God has given us, the ability that God has given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's why He came to this earth, to walk on this earth, to teach us, to show us, and think about how we repay it to Him. How we act and what we do. He said here, He said, Surely He hath born of uh, borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Surely he told it our problems. Surely he told it the things that we burden us down, that we give to him daily when we come to him in prayer. Oh, let's take that back. Maybe not daily. Right? We just come to him when we're in a big bind. You see, he's ready for everything. He came here to this earth to tote it all. He says, hey, my burden's light. Place your yoke upon me, right? Because he can handle those things. That's why he came to this earth. And then it keeps going and it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Hmm. If that don't get you just a little bit tore up, I don't know what will. It says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, listen, with his stripes, we were healed. Oh, man. In remembrance of me. That's what the table says. What do we do in remembrance of him? Oh, by the Lord's Supper it said, you take this bread and you break it in remembrance of me. Why? Because he was broken. Before their eyes, before you and I could receive salvation, Jesus Christ was broken. He left a perfect heaven. He left standing beside his Father in heaven, ruling the kingdom, ruling everything to come be born with no place to live, no place to stay, no true friends. You say, oh, well, he had true friends, did he? In my scripture, he asked them to watch with him, and it says they slept. How true of a friend is that? But he loved them anyway. Yes. It says that it was broken. In remembrance of me, the bread that is broken, which is the body that was broken of Christ. That means the crown of thorns that was shoved on his head. Can you only imagine? I've been in thorn patches before and it's not fun. But to stand there and have someone take that crown of thorns, they spent time plaiting that crown of thorns, and then they had him sitting in front of them, and yet they took him and they stuck it on his head and they shoved it down where it could sit. Can you imagine that? And you know what? If you, if you fast forward through the scripture just a little bit, it says that he stood before a shear and said not a word. When they, when they placed that crown of thorns on his head, he didn't tell them to stop. He, 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 didn't, he didn't jump up and say, you're not going to do that to me. You know why? Because he pictured Ben Britton. You know why? Because he pictured you. And he said, I'll take it so they don't have to. What about the whip. The whip that came out after that crown of thorns was placed on his head. When, when he was carried down and, and they set him down and they said, okay, well listen, uh, we're going to whip you and then we'll turn you loose. That'll make them happy. And it says that, that he was whipped and it said that flesh was ripped from his body. You know, every time that those, those whips dug in and it pulled back. And he done that without saying a word. A broken body. A broken body so that you and I 
listen, so that you and I, whether you accept it or not, have the opportunity for salvation. Understand that. He done it for the people that do not love him. Because my Bible says, whosoever believeth on him. You have the opportunity. It's your choice. And if you don't believe there's a God, well, guess what? He done it for you anyway. It says in the scripture that you and I are to love our neighbors the way that God loved us. Do we love our neighbors that much? No matter how they feel about us, we're going to do whatever anyway to love them. Because that's what Christ done for you and I. Listen, he, he was there being beat, being whipped, stripes across his back. And I can only imagine wherever else those tails of that whip hit. In his face, on his arms, all over his body. Ripping flesh, his body being broken. Why? So that scripture can be carried out. His body being broken so that you and I have the opportunity to receive salvation. What about by the nails? His body was broken by the nails. When he, when he told of the cross all the way to the hill of Golgotha. And he got there. And I can just imagine when, when, when people came down and they were going to put him on the cross, how big a fight it was. Now you think about that. If there had been a nail bent to a cross, I'm not going freely. They've been to work on it. You understand? How about you? It's going to take every bit of what they have to put me there. But not Jesus. He just went to it. A sheep before the slaughter. He never said a word. You know why? Because of you and I. That's why. Think about what he's done out a crown of thorns shoved down on his head. He's done been beaten and whipped. Never said a word. And now he's at the cross. And as he lays on the cross, can you imagine what's going through those soldiers' heads at that point? Do they think he just gave up? Do, do the people around say, well, he's just wore out, so he wants it to be over? Because what he's fixing to go through is nothing. Okay? Okay? The, the debt that he's fixing to experience is nothing. But the next brokenness that he experiences is everything. But he laid there. Knowing all the way there what they was going to do. He still laid there. And as they drove those nails in his hands and in his feet... He still knew what was coming. Why do you think he prayed in the garden? Why do you think he asked the others to pray for him? Because he knew what was coming. He absolutely knew the brokenness that he had to feel that you and I wouldn't have to feel it. Have you ever thought about it that way? brokenness that he had which was a spiritual brokenness when he said father why hast thou forsaken me why because he was covered with my sin because he was covered with your sin and you know what separates us from God sin Sin is death. It separates us from our God. And Jesus Christ had to accept every bit of that so you and I wouldn't have to. In remembrance of me is what tonight's about. As he gave, as he gave up the Spirit. 
there was one more brokenness that took place. And that's when that spear pierced his side. Why? Because the whole world had to know that he died for you and I. There was no doubt. Out of all the witnesses that were gathered around, when they pierced Jesus' side, and it said water and blood flowed forth, they absolutely knew that he had died. Why? Because of you and I. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Never said a word as they broke his body for you and I. And in the Lord's Supper, he says, Take this bread, breaketh in remembrance of me. says he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken because of what we done was why Jesus was stricken all those years ago it says and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth a perfect sacrifice no wrong done but yet he took a place on the cross so I wouldn't have to so you wouldn't have to yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus Christ justified many, that he shall bear their iniquities. There being you and I. What was next? He said, for in remembrance of me, take this cup. What was in that cup was the fruit of the vine, which represented what? Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood that came from his body. When? When the crown of thorns was shoved on his head. When? When he was beaten and whipped in front of everybody. When? When the nails was drove into his hands and his feet. When? When his side was pierced. And water and blood flew, uh, uh, drained from his side. Blood that was shed for you and I. And understand what I said. Shed for you and I. It was not taken. It was freely given. You understand that? Listen, that was not that was not a sacrifice. I can guarantee this. That was not a sacrifice that walked up there with the with with whomever that had it. And when they was going to slaughter it, there was not a sacrifice that stood still and said, "Okay, here I am." You know how I know that because I've been around animals all my life. You try to hem up an animal, what's going to happen? You're going to get kicked and bit and rammed and everything else. But our sacrifice, Jesus Christ, went willingly. Listen, they didn't take his blood. They didn't draw his blood. He gave his blood. You see the difference? Why? Because you and I. He said tonight, in remembrance of me, Remember what this was. It was blood that was freely given. Blood that was given so that you and I can be covered and sins forgiven. So that you and I can be redeemed in God's eyes. And let me tell you something else. 
It wasn't shed by accident. They did not accidentally, Jesus Christ did not accidentally show up there that day. It was planned. And you know when it was planned? Before Genesis 1-1. In the beginning. He knew. But yet he loved us anyway. We're gathered here tonight as a church to partake in the Lord's Supper. An ordinance that was given by Jesus Himself. And what He said was this. Take and do in remembrance of Me. In remembrance of Me. I'm going to ask each of you to bow your heads for just a moment. Remember what Jesus Christ done. Remember what he went through. Don't think about anybody else. I want you to be so selfish for just a minute. I want you to remember that he done that for you. Because that's what he said. You partake in this in remembrance of me. Dear Lord, I come to you tonight and I just thank you for the opportunity that you have given us, Lord, as a church to, to partake in the Lord's Supper, Lord. But Lord, I pray tonight that you help each of us to sincerely remember what you've done. To sincerely remember what you went through. That we could have salvation, Lord. You went through that. You died on our cross. And Lord, I pray that we can remember that. I pray that it rings so true in our lives, Lord. Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you for the opportunity for us to remember that. That we might carry it and let it just push us through all that we do that we bring you honor and glory. Lord, I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.